Okay, this is a tangerine rose spray, which you might think looks just about the same as the traditional rose we made, but in actual fact, it's made by a much quicker method. And the reason why I like to do this is if I'm going to make a lot of roses for a cake, because honest and truthfully, it takes a lot of time to put all the petals on individually. And this way, you can have just as beautiful a display of roses, but in half the time. So this is a quick method of making roses. Now, I'm going to start off with my pea-sized balls of paste again, because I'm going to make the quick method or the nicer method of the centre, which is the rolled method rather than the cone. So I'm starting off with a small cone of paste. I'm going to show you how to make it again. I know we did it with our wild rose, but I think it's sometimes a little bit difficult to pick it up how to do it first of all. So the more practice you have, the better. So I'll show you how, to, how it's done again. I've rolled my pea-sized piece of paste into almost a cigar, cigar shape, if you can call it that. And I'm going to roll it out with my brush to a D shape. Now I'm going to shape it first with my fingers to get that D shape onto it. I'm going to have the base of it not too thick, but I'd like it even. And then with my ball tool, I'm going to smooth it out around the edges to thin it out to make it really quite, and I want it to be, I want a slight ridge at the bottom, but not too thick, otherwise we'd have a very large base to a centre. So then I'm going to take that and put some glue slightly up that side, along the bottom and down there. Then I'm going to take my 24 gauge wire, make a hook in the top of it, place my hook onto the paste and turn it over and then I'm going to roll it into that paste. I will adjust the size just to make sure it's closed up and is formed nicely at the bottom. And remember, you need to clean the bottom and make sure that it's closed across that tape, that wire, because if not, it will come out. And there's your nice little centre. I'll put it into the, to the foam to dry. Now that first one forms our bud. As you can see in here, you'll see that it actually, the, just the first one is the petal for that first bud. So I've got one, I've got some I made earlier and I'll dry because that needs to dry for 24 hours before you can use it. So I didn't think you'd want to sit looking at this tape for 24 hours while it dried. So the next thing is to actually make, as you can see, we've got two there. So we, we'll have two of these for the, the bud and then we're going to make a bud that's slightly open. Now, this is where things are going to be a little bit different because we're going to use blossom cutters to make our rose. Now, I have the most valuable set of cutters that I've got. And I've got one, two, three, four, five different sizes of blossom cutters. And every one of these can either be used to make a blossom or to make a rose. And this time I'm going to take this centre 
one out of the center, not the very smallest one, but the one from the center, and I'm going to use that. But these can be used for so many things, so they're a good investment. So you'll find those details of that on our resource video. Now, the next stage is to roll out some paste. Um, I think we'll go to the, the second shade, because we've got three shades there. And I think that's the second shade, that's the lighter shade. And what we'll do for the next bit is to roll out our paste. And we want one of those with the next size up. It's really and truly if you have got a lot of roses to make, you really haven't got time to make those beautiful separate petal ones. And also you'll find that the more delicate they are, the easier they break. And when you're trying to assemble them into a bunch, you might find that your delicate rows will actually break. So you're better off just keeping it, the delicate one, the traditional rows, on its own, or just one or two of them on a cake. Now, I'm going to cut this blossom shape. Now, and to make sure it's clean around the edges. And I want to put that underneath there. Make sure that puts me on top to make sure it keeps moist. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this so I've got two petals and three petals. Now I'm going to cut that between the petals down there a little bit on each one, just so it's slightly deeper. Pop him under there and I'm going to work this one with my ball tool. Just softly, just to soften the edges a bit. I don't want it really fluted, but just to sort of soften it out a bit. So I'm going to take one of my centers and some paste, some glue, and I'm going to paint that. And I'm going to place that around that one and that around there. Just slightly curl it out because that's just opening. And there's a, a quarter bud for you. And then the next one has got a, a row of, if you have a look, it's got a row of two petals and a three. So I'm going to cut another shape out of my paste. Oops. Now, quite cleanly, make sure it's got no bits on the edge. Put it back in the cover. A bit dry, so the next one. And two. And a three petal. So I'm going to again, I'm going to tool this slightly just to soften the edges. I'm going to use another center. Glue. We've got the rose. Another quarter bud, and then we're going to put this one on top to make the half bud. 
him out. Turn it over. Mix up glue. And that will go around the outside of that. So you've got the rose that's coming out again a little more. Again, make sure the base is not rough because if you do, you won't make anything else onto it. Now, to make the final one, to put the final row on, we're going to cut another blossom shape. Smooth the edges with your finger, get every surplus off. And with my paint brush, which I've got here, I'm going to go softly around the edges to make it just a little bit wavy. turn it over and I'm going to tool it slightly just to give it a little bit more of a, a petal shape and then I'm going to take some blue put in the center And bring him up and bring the petals up. And that gives you the, the whole root rose in a much faster time. And as you can see, if you've got several hundred to make, it's a much quicker way to make them than making one petal at a time. And then, of course, at the back, we've got the calyx that I showed you, which is the flat calyx and a little ball on the end, just to make it a quick one. And that will speed it up a lot for you. Now, I showed you how to make the leaves with a traditional rose, which were to leave a raised vein in the centre and feed a wire into it. Now that's very nice, but each leaf has to be rolled individually. And again, which is the purpose of showing you how to make these roses in this, in this display, um, is the fact that if you've got an awful lot to do, and sometimes you may have many, many, many dozens on a cake to show. So this is a quicker way of doing it. They may not be so delicate, but they won't break so easily and you'll find that they're far better if you've got a large quantity to make and also if you've got a large bouquet of flowers, sugar flowers to wire up there's less likely to break than they would if they were very delicate so we're starting off with our usual case but this time I'm not going to roll it so thinly just not so thin, it's not too thick but uh, not so delicate. And I think that's just about right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my leaf out of that without leaving that vein in it. Go around the edge and make sure it's clean. Let's push him into the into the cover again before we let him dry out. 
and there we have a slightly thicker leaf and with this one I'm going to take a very thin wire which is a 32 wire and it's an uncovered wire and I'm going to thread it into the centre of the leaf up between the, the, the two sides more or less nearly to the top so you can't see him back or front so the wire's completely inside and then with my veiner I'm going to press it on to the veiner and that will give it a slightly thinner edge so in one go I've made it finer and it's had its veins and I'm not going to put the veins in the back because as you can see in this display you do not see the black back because it's flat on the it would be flat on your cake I'm going to bend that wire slightly inside the paste so that it doesn't come out and then it won't when it's dry it will not pull out and I'm going to leave that to dry and that is a fast way to make a rose leaf and I think if you've got many hundreds of rose leaves to do I think you'll find that this is a far, far better way to do it now we're going to show you how to make um, the ribbon on here, the little pick, the ribbon pick um, which does make a little bit of a difference when you've got a spray of roses because it just adds a little more and a little bit of shine is always nice or a little bit of ribbon is nice with your spray so all that happens with this is I've taken two pieces of ribbon and I've put them together like this and Now I've caught them. I'm going to put them together by using a piece of 32 wire which I've actually wound around, twisted. So there's your pick and then I'm going to take some, some tape again press it together and start rolling it down and then if you find you've got to go back over it again then that's easy enough to do just take time to practice this because you won't get it perfectly well the first time so and that's the ribbon pick that we put in with our flowers it makes an awful lot of difference to a spray so now I'll show you how this was put together. Again, on our rows that we've just made, I've put the calyx at the bottom and also a little ball of paste to show the seed pod. And that is the quick way of doing the seed pod. So you've already made that in the last project. So now we've got all these made we've got we have got two buds we've got a quarter bud a half bud which you just saw me make and three whole roses and we've got some rose leaves and a couple of picks already made one we've just made there's enough there to make a spray so it doesn't take very money to make just a simple spray for a birthday cake now the thing is I've put some tape on some of them but some of them want to be taped so that I can actually handle them so I'm going to just pop some tape on that down it's a green wire so I don't need to do it thoroughly just enough so it doesn't slip while I'm assembling it. So again, pinch it together 
Roll it in your, between your thumb and forefinger. I know you'll need a lot of practice doing that, but it's well worth perfecting the art because it helps when you're trying to assemble everything. Not too much, because as I say, you've got already a green wire, so it's literally to stop it slipping. Finish with this one. Very quickly. Because another thing, if you've got this tape cut into four pieces, you've got it, it will last much longer. So economically, it's very good. So that's the flowers. I've actually taped those leaves together. Or rather, I've taped the stems. I haven't taped them together. So I just need to do these big ones. Slide it up so it, this one's got to be covered because it's not a green wire. We're going and the last one. So there we have all the pieces for our rose spray. And now it's a matter of just putting them together. So a bit more tape. Well, the tape you choose, whatever shade, shade of tape you choose, is up to you. Um, the green shows up better, the dark green shows up better when I'm trying to show you how to make these. So, all these leaves I steamed earlier, I shaded with a little brown colouring, uh, petal dust, and then I steamed. So just to give it a little bit of shade and this is assembled in exactly the same way as I showed you for the wild rose. And as I say for you, it's, it's a matter of practicing. I've got a little bit of tape hanging off there which I will clip off. And again, clip right together and then off you go. So, arrange them in the proper way so you've actually got a, a nice shape. And we'll do the other one. Again, your three put together. See, I missed a bit at the top. That was me trying to rush. Not a good idea when you're making flowers. Have to tape that together. And when I said about making flowers that are a little bit sturdier, I have on occasion broken quite a lot of roses when I've made them far, in, far too finely and delicate. And it's been very upsetting because I have to start again. So it's not a, not a wise thing if you're going to put a lot of flowers together is to make them too thinly or too delicate because when they dry they become brittle and if you're not careful they will break so 
So that's this to get those together. So now we're going to start with the top one, the bud, to stop, start with. And I'm going to wire together, or tape together I should say, the other bud, so that the two buds are at the top. Just slightly staggered. So that one comes about halfway up the other one. So that's your shape. And then as you can see, we've got the leaf behind it, so I'm actually going to put the leaf onto it now, the leaf spray. And <clears throat> that comes so it's just above so the bud, it comes about a quarter way up that leaf. Put a little bit of tape around it. You needn't put a lot of tape, just enough to hold it, but because I've actually taped the stems, it doesn't slip, so I can actually get hold of it. It's much better. Then we're going to put that bud there. So that comes about a quarter way up the lower bud. So this, this is about that level. Just a little bit of tape. Then I'm going to add one of these ribbon picks just to give it a little bit of a lift. So that gets taped into there. These can all be arranged when you've completed your display. And then the next one to go on is that half bud. And I'm going to add another ribbon pack pick to that side. And then, so this is, you see you've got the little display of buds at the top. Then I'm going to put that whole rows on to that side. And then one on the other side. See, it doesn't matter how careful you are, you can hear that they're, they're knocking together, but because these are slightly more sturdy, nothing happens to them, which is the best thing. So we want another ribbon pick in the centre. Which we're going to put that. Then the other rows, which balances it out nicely, so we've got the three. And again, a little bit of tape. And then finally, the last leaf spray which we're going to put on the bottom. Attach that to it. I'm going to get a little bit of a thicker tape, or should wider tape, I should say, to put on the bottom there, just to cover the bottom stem. So there's my leaves. I need to arrange them nicely now. I'll just put it on one side. If you wanted another leaf spray on the other side, you could do, but 
I actually think it's enough because if it's laying, if you were laying it on a cake, it would be nice to have it so that it was just slightly over and you perhaps wouldn't need the other leaf there.